Colin Elam again, aka the Musket Man, and I am back for episode five of Gun Table Talk. Now, I've got two guns out here today. I've got the 1847 Walker, and I've got the Model 3 Dragoon. And that is what we're going to be talking about in today's episode is the Model 3 Dragoon. So without further ado, let's continue Gun Table Talk. Thanks for joining me, guys. So anyway, this won't be more of a history over the gun. I think it's going to be more of like the differences and kind of the what makes it a little bit better than the Walker. Now, that's just going off historical correctness, not your opinion, because I like both of these guns very well. So, right off the bat, I mentioned a lot of the problems that were going on with the Walker back in my previous video. You know, this big behemoth pit horse pistol, and one of the major issues was the loading lever. Now, like I said, my spring has been doing very well, but I'm sure over time it will get loose and start to fall down. So originally back in the day, the loading lever and the walkers would fall down pretty much after every shot, especially if you were loading a military charge in these guns. So that was one of the other problems, or one of the major problems with the walker. Number two, in my opinion, was if you look at this cylinder, you'll see there's a bunch of holes in the cylinder. So that's basically your stopper. So the lever that pops up, like I mentioned in the last video, as you can hear it, it will catch. And it did. Let's see if it caught, caught the cylinder. Let's do it again. But as you see, I had to cock the gun slowly. I didn't Josie Wells that thing. So that was another problem. If you cock the gun too fast, it would spin that cylinder too fast and throw the timing off where that latch would not stop your cylinder. So you would either have a complete misfire or if the hammer hit the cap enough, you would have about a quarter of your ball being shaved off and the rest of your ball is going down the barrel, but you have no idea what it's going to do because you've lost all your accuracy. So unless you're three feet away, it's probably not going to do much. So that was one problem, especially if you got a 60 grain powder charge, you want to make sure that that barrel or that cylinder is lined up perfectly with your barrel. So that was number two issue. Number three, the mainspring in the walker. It's very weak. Now, I was going to draw up a picture to kind of show you an example, but I decided not to. The mainspring for this walker is not even held in by a screw. In fact, you use the palm of your grip to push it down off the hammer, and it pulls down, and it comes off. Very easy for disassembly, and it's actually more convenient if you ask me. Problem is, it's too much mainspring to where it doesn't create enough tension on this hammer. Now, what, am I, what do I mean by that? So you cock it. It cock, lock, nothing, we're good to hear. When you would pull that trigger, it falls down, lands on the hammer, sets off the percussion cap. But the problem because of the weak mainspring, when that cap went off, you would have blowback from the burning powder, which would blow your hammer back just like that, and the cap would fall off into the action. And typically you would have a cap jam sometimes every shot or at least every other shot to where you'd have to get your other hand to rotate the cylinder. So that was another big problem. So those were the three major problems with the gun, but it was Colt's second try at a gun. And for that time, it did pretty well because think about it, you know, they had those problems, but you got to think for back in those times, you had six shots. Sure, you had to slap your loading lever back up, but you still had six shots. So very good. So when the Dragoons came out, like I said, this is the Model 3 out of 5. There's actually five different Dragoons. This is Model 3 that was the most successful. So immediately, people like the Walker, especially the Texas Rangers or people that used them in the Mexican-American War. Holy cow, this gun is great. You have six shots. But we have some problems with them, and we would like to see if this can be fixed. So out of the three problems that I have mentioned... With this Model 3 Dragoon, as you can see, there were some differences. It is a shorter cylinder, 7.5 inch barrel versus the 9 inch barrel and longer cylinder uh, on the Walker. In fact, the cylinder is probably, I'd say, nearly a quarter inch shorter, and it's an inch and a half smaller barrel, so it's not as heavy, more maneuverable if you have to use it. With that Walker, it's more like a ship anchor you're having to move around if you have to fire it. Now, that helps with your accuracy, you have less sway, but maybe it was a little too heavy. So that was another deal. So I mentioned the loading lever. So what did they do with the Model 3? 
As you can see, they added a latch at the end of the barrel to help with the loading lever falling down. So as you can see, just kind of push down, releases the loading lever. You can pop it back up. And it is like, see if I can get it in there. It is like a tooth holding it. So naturally, it didn't fall down as much. Now with the originals, it was still known to fall down maybe a couple times, but it lowered that rate to where it didn't happen as much. And since this is a Model 3, I just showed you the little holes that were drilled into the cylinder. That was your stopper to help that stops your cylinder, lines it up with your barrel. Look at this one. With this Dragoon, this is more like any other cap and ball revolver and even modern revolvers as well. So that is actually for the Model 3. They actually figured that out in the Model 2 Dragoon is they added a guider, as you can see with any other modern pistol, to, and they thickened up that lever to help sol you know, make it more solid when you cocked it to lock, really lock up that cylinder. And as I can see, it's, it's there. It ain't moving. Like, it is locked up. So when the Model 2 Dragoon came out, they figured that out. You know, hey, we can, when that, we can make it where the timing goes. So when you're cocking the gun, the lever is starting to go up. So they fixed the timing a little bit. So the lever is already kind of touching the cylinder. But as the cylinder keeps spinning, it gets into that guider and falls directly into place. Now increasing your rate of fire and your overall performance with the gun. So you could cock it a little bit faster, fire a little bit quicker versus the walker. Now the Model 1 Dragoon still had the little hole cutouts in it, but it still had the latch and the loading lever, you know, everything like that. But that was one thing they were like, yeah, you know, it's a better model, but we're still having problems with that. With the Model 3, uh, or at least any of the Dragoons. I mentioned the mainspring was kind of more like a snake, kind of how the mainspring was. This mainspring was more like a, I wouldn't say a pencil, but it was more straighter with a curve at the end held in by a thick screw into the grip. What does that do? Well, you have less of a mainspring and you have more tension buildup. So when you cock that gun, and this is a heavier, it, it is heavier to cock this. It takes a little bit more. Not horrible, but it takes a little bit more. So now, when it's like this held into the frame, it goes down like this, creating a lot of tension as it's held in. So when you fire and release it, it's got more oomph pushing that hammer. So when it hits the cap, cap goes off, you have less blowback from the burning powder. So this hammer will stay here you have less cap jam. So it helped kind of solve the cap jam problem. Was it inevitable? Yes, any cap and ball revolver you shoot, besides probably the Rogers and Spencer, you're going to have a cap jam. It's inevitable, doesn't mean the gun's broken, that's just the way it is. But in comparison to the Walker, it helped change that dramatically. You had less cap jams, also increasing your rate of fire and overall performance and it was just better gun. It's just, you know, you had to get a screwdriver to take off the mainspring, and eh, not as convenient, but it was better. So, those are the major issues, and another little thing is, and I'll put the Dragoon down real quick. On the Model 1 and Model 2 Dragoons, they still had the flat backplate on the trigger guard. They still had that, just like the Walker. When they got to the Model 3, like we discussed in other videos, is guys with fat fingers would typically have their knuckles raw or they couldn't fit their fingers through the trigger guard. So on the Model 3 and most guns after that, they went to an all-round trigger guard. So on the Model 1 and 2 Dragoons, it will still have the flat trigger guard, which I actually like. I think that's cooler. It's different. Most all revolvers are the round one, which I like too. But why not have something different to go, oh, you know, you don't see that every day. So that was me. So that was basically the only differences between the three models. Now, uh, on the Model 2 versus the Model 3, that was really pretty much it and some minor differences. That was about it. And the Model 1, you know, you had the, they fixed the uh, timing issue on the cylinder so Model 1 did good, but a lot of people are like, yeah, we still have a timing issue. So after that, they stuck with this guiding system even all the way into modern revolvers because it works. So 
you had that. Now you, I've noticed that you said there was, or that I, you've probably noticed by now I've said there was five models. Sorry, I got tongue tied there. Yes, technically there was only three model Dragoons. Now, mine is the model three, the more modern and more successful one. What are the other two? Well, there was the Model 3 military or martial model. If you've been paying attention to my last episode, you go, oh, I know where he's going with this. So what they did on the military or martial model is they cut slits into the back of the frame and put a little hole, well, not a hole, but more of a latch type system in the bottom of the grip to, you guessed it, to add a stock. Now you, you had a pistol and a short barrel carbine. So you had best of both worlds, like the 1860 Army. So that's kind of where they got the concept. This was the first one to do that, not the 1860 Army. So there you go. The fifth model was still pretty much the Model 3, just some minor differences, and it's often called the Eli Whitney Model 3 Dragoon or the Eli Whitney Junior Dragoon. And that, pretty much the Model 3, little differences here and there, it was a thank you from Colt to Eli Whitney Jr. for him helping him manufacture his guns and get him truly out there into the gun world. So that was a thank you. So there's five total Dragoons in the family that you can own. I would like to, in the some near future, to own all five just to shoot them and say, I've got all five of them, let's talk about them. So that's just me. As on the range... As I've said in the past, I had to get slick shot nipples for the walker because the mainspring's not very strong. And uh, I had to do that to fix that problem of the cap jams, and it did. Everything you've ever heard about slick shot nipples was right. No one was lying. They were correct. It works, especially with the Remington and number 11s. I think out of 24 shots, I had one slight little cap jam where I just had to slightly rotate the cylinder. That was it. Easy fix. So it pretty much fixed that problem. On my Model 3 Dragoon, same company. Both are made by Uberti. I don't think I have to get any slick shot nipples with that because, like I've already said, it was a better design, uh, design mainspring. I have fired 25 shots or 24 shots through this pistol. That's it. It's essentially still brand new. And I, same deal, I think I had one slight little cap jam, but that's going to happen with cap and ball revolvers, out of 24 shots because it was a stronger mainspring therefore the caps didn't fall back as much and i didn't have as many cap jams you can still get it for this if i want to to maybe just tweak the performance just a little bit better but i may not just to save the money as you as i've said cylinders are shorter 60 grain total powder charge in the walker 45 to 50 in the dragoon i've shot 45 grains of pirate xp through my dragoon and it shot a really good grouping, one-handed, by the way, at 15 yards at a 6x6 still target. Very tight grouping, about the size of a baseball, I would say. One-handed, so that is probably the powder I was going to do. I tried it with 40 grains, and the group widened up. So five more extra grains of powder did very well. Now, you might find something different. You may be using a filler, like 30 grains or whatever. I mentioned that about the walker. Topic for another time, though. So I have noticed that I probably, if I get the Model 3 Dragoon, I don't have to get the slick shot nipples because I don't have that problem. Now, real quick before I run out of time, my honorable mention is Ricky Mack. He's another guy on Instagram that's just like me, loves these guns. On the cap jams, he sent me a video that I actually did know. If you're shooting these, and is, his, is historically correct, is when you cock, fire, Bring the gun back up, pointing in the air, cock it again, cap will fall down, and take aim. And it should, for the most part, eliminate cap jams. But, you know, if you're at a gun range, you probably can't do that. So, anyway, honorable mention. Thanks, Ricky, for the information. Well, anyway, guys, I'm about to run out of time. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Gun Table Talk. And we were talking about the uh, Model 3 Dragoon, Colt Dragoon. Thanks, guys, for watching, and remember, keep your powder dry. I'm the Musket Man, and we will catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.